I'm Rich Lund, and as I've said many times, I'm just a guy trying to help out the monarchs. In my most recent video, we just described to you what OE bacteria is. Talked about its life cycle, talked about how prevalent it is in the populations here in North America. In the previous video, we also explained to you how I've had to make the tough choice, and if I do find any monarchs that are infected with OE bacteria, I cannot release them back into the wild population. I truly hope you understand why I've had to make this choice, and that from this point forward, any monarchs that I test that come out with OE bacteria, they've had to be euthanized. I hope you understand why I've had to make that decision, and if you haven't seen that video yet, I do recommend you please check this one out before you continue watching this one. There's some important information there, helps make understanding why we're doing this a little bit easier. So now, let me show you my method for testing for OE bacteria. This is the method that I figured out how to do from Tips Online, and we got to travel a little bit back in time to August, when things were warmer, and I was in definite need of a haircut back then. Let's show you how to test for OE bacteria. Okay, to be doing this, let's take a look at what materials you're going to need. Now again, I want helping out the monarchs to be as low cost as possible, but honestly, I've tried to look for spores with other magnifiers, a magnifying glass, I've tried a jeweler's eye, I really can't see them at all until I get the microscope. And since I've got three monarchs to test, I've got three note cards here laid out and ready to go, and also you need some tape. Now you want the film tape, the stuff that's a nice, firm, plastic, clear sheen, nothing that's frosted. You want the tape that's durable and you're going to be able to see through with the microscope. And so first I'm going to get a piece of tape ready, about two and a half inches or so. And I don't want to touch it too much in the middle because I don't want my fingerprints to be where I'm going to be looking at in the microscope. So I just touch the very edges and leave it there on the table so it's ready for me. Okay, next and very important part, how are we going to handle the monarchs? We want to handle them to minimize the amount of stress we're going to put them under. To begin, is it even ready to be handled? This guy just came out of his chrysalis about an hour ago. He's just started fanning his wings, which means he's getting close to being ready, but not ready yet. I know that they're ready to be tested when they are starting to actually use their wings, when they're trying to fly around a little bit. If it thinks that its wings are good enough to be trying to fly, then it's letting me know it's ready to leave, which is also now letting me know these days it's ready to be tested. Adorable. Okay, ever so gently, I'm going to put my thumb and forefinger on the two sides of the wings where they connect to the thorax, to the middle part of the body. Careful not to be holding any legs. And that's just a little bit of pressure that I'm adding, just enough so it can't flex the wings. It's a good way to hold the monarch for this testing. Now do you see as I hold it, there's room there for the abdomen to come out. Oh, buddy, thank you. You couldn't have timed that better. So he can get his abdomen out, and that's actually what we're going to hope to test. Now something about my technique, and I really recommend this. Get your tape, both ends, one on your thumb and one on your middle finger. That way you still have your forefinger. And you see this curve? This is going to be the first thing I want to touch the monarch's abdomen. And then I've got my forefinger here so I can press down on it a little bit and help collect those scales. Now as soon as he sticks it out, with another finger, I'm going to kind of push it out and extend it a little bit. And then I've got the non-sticky side of the tape. I stretch that out so that way it can go under the legs and protect the legs from hitting the sticky side. Then I'm going to touch it to the abdomen. Apply just a little bit of pressure with my other finger. And now I remove it. And at no time did the stickiness touch anything other than the abdomen. I admit it takes some practice. One time I did get a leg that was just a little bit stuck to the tape. It came off very easily, but I was really nervous and that's how I learned to make sure to put the non-sticky side in the way of the leg and the abdomen so the legs cannot touch anything that's sticky. And you can already see that pattern that's there. That's what we're going to test. As for the monarch, I'm done testing him, but I want to make sure I know which one it was. So I'm going to put him someplace else 
just in a little jar temporarily while we wait for the results. And because we're using a microscope, I'm actually going to put the tape on the very edge of the card so it's easier for me to get it where the normal microscope slide would have to be. And just press it down. And it does look like a little bit of the wing was touched too, but that won't do the Monarch any harm. Okay, time to test. Place it right under here. Magnification I'm using is uh, 10 times magnification. And that's when I can start seeing the spores and actually see their shape. If I use just four times, I can see them, but they're little black dots. And I want something more, more specific. And I want something more official. I want to see the shape of those spores if they're there. I'm going to move it around too because I want to check all over the place. And I got some good news. I'm not seeing any spores. Awesome. Now I don't know exactly why I do this, but uh, it's just for the sake of record keeping. I'm a little bit uh, adamant about wanting to always have records. So I'm going to write down the date. Today's August 31st, 2016. And I'm also going to put that this was a negative result. So in other words, no OE. And I do that by just writing the word clear. I also indicate the sex, again, I don't know why, just because I want to. And now I've got that for my record keeping. This could be helpful, I think, if ever somebody needed some education on what the OE spurs look like and what the scales look like under a magnifier. So I don't know how it will come in useful, but maybe it will. Okay, you are next. So again, and just lightly, gently grip it at the base of the wings where they connect to the thorax. Now I'm going to slightly push the wings aside, get the thorax out. Use the tape to block the legs. Press down a little bit on the abdomen, just a little bit. And it's stuck to my fingernail, but not the butterfly. Not the butterfly. And we got our sample. Cool. Okay. Let's test our sample. Moment of truth. And this looks beautiful, nice and clean. You want to check thoroughly, you want to check everywhere. I haven't had any results like it yet, but I've heard from others. But you can have just small, slight infections where there's only just a few spores. But a few spores is enough to where, yep, it has OE bacteria. It cannot be released. You've passed the test. Off to Mexico you go. Good luck! Okay, last one. Uh -huh. Okay. Got a sample. Doesn't have to be perfect. It can be smeared like that. Believe me, if it has spores, we'll have picked them up. Alright, last one. Cross your fingers. And he's good. He's good. I am going to show you now uh, one that is infected. When I first found out that I needed to be doing this, I learned how to test one kind of through trial and error, always being careful, didn't harm any. And one of the early ones, actually the first one that I tested this year, 
had a positive test for OE spores and it was heavily infected. Looked normal, looked completely normal, looked healthy. Well, I kept that note card so that way you can see the results. Take a look. Here's what an infected one looks like. So in doing these three, I was pretty worried actually that I was going to get a, a bad result. And, and if I had one, I was going to show you show you that on camera. I'm glad I didn't have to. It's cool that all three of these guys are clean. Got to admit too, I was kind of happy for this video when I saw that the three that emerged were all three males. So that way if one was infected, at least it was a male. Because like with many species, as you know, the female's more important, isn't she? So that was late August, and as you saw, the three that I tested on film, they were all clear of OE infection. When I set out to make that video, I was actually pretty worried that I'd have multiples have OE infection. As it turned out, only one of the 30 adults that I reared had the infection, and it turned out, coincidentally, to be the very first one that I tested. So after that one, I had no idea, was it going to be a lot, a little bit? Certainly I was happy that it was only one, and I was even happier that it was a male. As you can see, the spores are really tiny compared to the scales of the monarch butterfly, which are already small themselves. Estimates are about one one-hundredth the size of, an, of a monarch scale. So that's why the microscope really was something necessary in order to see these things. I've truly tried to look at them just with my plain eyes, and it's indistinguishable. I cannot tell which ones were infected, which ones weren't. So for those of you who have decided to take it on to be releasing monarchs past the level of just 10 or so a year, if you're getting especially into like the hundreds, I think that it may be important if you're that committed, you might have to find it in your budget to get a microscope. I'm very much looking forward here in Michigan to some much warmer weather and of course our next monarch season. More videos will be coming out. I've got a long list of different topics I'd like to explore. And if you have any suggestions for future ones, be sure to leave them in the comments below. Subscribe if you have not yet, so that way you can keep up to date with any other important topics we feel need to be discussed. And if you found this video helpful, if you learned anything from it, please give it that thumbs up like. The way that YouTube works, the more likes that a video has and the more minutes people have watched it, that actually kicks on their algorithms to make it recommended to more people. So really, giving it that thumbs up like gets this out to more people, lets them know about our cause. I'm Rich Lund. Thank you very much for watching this video. And thank you very much for taking an interest in trying to help out the monarch butterfly.